All right, and we are back for our evening games. Up first, we have our fifth versus sixth playoff. Coming up next, after that, we will have our semi-final game. So we will have our second place and our third place teams, the Jawas Wolves and the Katon Hippos. And then our final game will be first place versus fourth place, the Leader Tigers taking on the Yonhan Blue Helmets. This first game, fifth versus sixth, Bit of bragging rights between the two teams, for they are out of the semi-finals. This is their final game for CPSL 2019. For those that were watching earlier today, you would have seen the Bulls get a win to take them equal points on fourth, but unfortunately, they only won by one goal. They needed to win by three to beat the Blue Helmets on goal difference and go through to the final. The Commandos, they got a draw to make it equal as well in that fourth place, but again, goal difference just not falling in their favor. And the Blue Helmets retained that fourth place and that spot in the semi-final coming up later. Both teams lining up in the center for their introductions. They'll then have a quick warm-up before we get these games underway. Introducing the Jinjoa Bulls first, number one from Singapore, Po Yu Juan. Number four from the Netherlands, Stivo Hergele. Number five from France, Jeremy Ascaf. Number seven from Italy, Gianmarco Emanuele. Number eight from Russia, Vladimir Satarov. The captain of the Jinjoa Bulls, number 10 from New Zealand, Anthony Baronson Vinoy. And from Spain, number 11, Vincenti Claramonte. Introducing the Chudushao Commandos now. Number three from China. Homeboy from Ningbo, Chuo Shen. Number four from Spain, Alejandro Valls. Number five from Australia, Anton Holmes. Number seven from Russia, Igor Zandarov. Number eight from Germany, Mario Kupers. And the captain of the Chudushao Commandos from England, number nine, Ed Lart. Number 10 from Germany, Holger Diedrich. And number 11 from France. Mathieu Lelalio. Our referees for this first game, Chi Chi Lu from Chinese Taipei and Alan Winter from Wales. All right, and joining me in commentary for this first half, number eight for the leader Tigers. Joshua Vivian from New Zealand. Joshua, how are you? Good, thanks. How have you found CPSL 2019 Season 2? Um, it's been a pretty good experience so far. Pretty eye-opening. Yeah. So we heard from a couple of people earlier that this is indeed your second international trip, I believe. Yeah, it's my second trip overseas playing polo. So your first one was Oceania earlier this year in yeah. Australia? First, yeah, in Sydney, this beginning of this year. This is my second overseas thing. Pretty big, but pretty excited to be here. Well, you've had some pretty good stats this season, a couple of early goals in your first couple of games, so a bit of confidence boost there? Yeah, it was pretty good to score a couple of goals in our first game. A bit of confidence to keep going. And how have you found the year? Tigers this season. Oh, Tigers have been great to play for. Such a good team. Big thanks to all the sponsors that we have for CPSL 2019. 
great all of the support that we receive in China and throughout the world. For those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, please leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Shout out to everyone, especially in Australia and New Zealand. Big shout out to New Zealand. <laughs> So this first game we have, 5th versus 6th, Josh, how do you think it's going to pay out? Do you think they're both going to try and get one final win on the board? Yeah, of course. I don't think anyone really wants to come last. So I think both teams are going to be going pretty hard for the win. Any predictions from you? 6-4 um, to the Commandos. Thinking the Commandos have the upper hand? Why is that? Um, just think Ed's going to score a couple of goals, maybe Mario on the inside. It'd be good to see. Yeah, it'd be good to see some leadership from number nine for the Commandos, Ed Lart. Current under-21 world champion. Needs to lead from the front. Meanwhile, the Bulls have been racking up the number of shots, especially from Jean Marco. So we'll see that that will most likely continue into this game. He has scored a couple very nice goals. He has. And he has taken some outrageous shots. <laughs> <laughs> Polo is 90% 90 confidence though. All right, we have our teams just wrapping up their warm-up. They're going to have one last chat, a bit of a chant to pump themselves up, and we'll get this game underway. So we do have an interesting lineup between these two teams as far as stats go. The Bulls have rated the highest number of shots for this season to a total of 96 over six games. That is a pretty decent feat. Commanders on the other hand, one of the lowest Currently just under 60. Well, the Commandos do have a very strong defense and a very good in attack with that duo, German duo of Coopers and Diedrich just creating the space. But we have the charge start here now. Ed Lart representing for the Commandos, but John Marco just powering ahead and easily getting there before him. Ed looking just a bit tired out there. End of a long, long season. Yeah, we've been dragging Ed out of bed at 6 a.m. every morning to get those early morning runs to meet his fitness targets for the England team, but maybe taking their toll on his game here. And the first shot blocked there for a corner. Balls with Jean Marco. He does go for the shot, even though it's through four paddles. Falls for the commandos. Cooper's trying to feed it through, but it's loose. Jean Marco pounces on, he's got an open goal. Not sure if that hit the upright or was 
It's kept out by the keeper, but has fallen for the commandos again. Now with Holmes. Over to Zandarov. Gonna try and feed it through to his captain. It's been stopped there by Vicente. Now with Choshan. Crowd incredibly receptive to their homeboy from Ningbo this afternoon. Equally as loud for him in this game this evening. Oh, Mario's going to light this up. I oh, feeds it through nicely to Xanderov. He's only got two paddles to get through. Oh, just off the bottom side of the bar. Unlucky there for the Russian. He did have the keeper beat, just needed to put it a little bit higher. Great feed in from Mario Coopers though. Lovely feed there from Escaf to his captain. Back to Escaf. Oh, and we have our first goal of the game. Great work from the Frenchman, number five, Jeremy Escaf. He's creating that space on the left hand side, feeding it to his captain, back to him, taking his time, putting it past the goalie. So we've seen both of these teams reverting back to a 3 1 defence. A bit more conservative than the aggressive 2-2 that we saw both of them playing in their previous game when they were trying to vie for that fourth spot. But now both of them just not needing to be as aggressive. Just looking to get the win, so... Keeping that defense nice and tight. Marco just trying to see if he can get it round the back of Coopers, but sends it back out again. Vicente with the shot, but it's blocked down. Commandos have it now with Alejandro. Sends it over the other side to Holger. Oh, shoot there. Looking for the long shot. Oh, just wide. Uncharacteristic for the German to be off target, but maybe the pressure of their final game getting to him. Nice lobbed ball across to Cuppy. His shot just deflected over. Referee's just not seen the deflection, but lovely sportsmanship from the goalkeeper for the commandos. Anton Holmes has just let the referee know that he did get a touch on that. And the oh, Bulls now. have called their timeout for this half. They do get one per half each team. So they're going to just sit here, have a little bit of a chat, come up with what they're going to do on this immediate attacking play, and also maybe change up a few things for the second half of this first half. Plenty of fans out there tonight. Yeah, great to see them all supporting the competition here in Ningbo. We did visit a school earlier this week. Josh was fortunate enough to be playing in that game against the Hippos. Tigers winning with a goal in the last three seconds of the game. But yeah, a lot of enthusiasm for canoe polo as a sport with a lot of schools here.
relatively small city, Ningbo, in comparison to other Chinese cities, only 8 million. A lot of other people around the world will see that as quite a large number though. Now with Hergele, feeds it into Escaf. Oh, an excellent second goal there for the Frenchman. So that's two goals in this first half. Bulls are leading the Commandos 2-0. Great dark drive down the middle, splitting the defence. goal there from Igor Zandarov for the Commandos. He's driving down that left hand side. Mario Cooper's keeping Cuppy busy. The shot just going over his head and into that goal. Will he shoot it? Yes he will. But it is blocked. So they have turned over the ball back to the Commandos very quickly. Anton just deciding to send it back out. We did see him try the round arm in his previous game, but was, wasn't particularly successful, so probably not going to try it again. Again, Escaf racing down that side. Now got two on him. Has it across to his goalkeeper, Pole. Got a bit of space, is he going to go for the shot? He does, but great save there from Anton Holmes. Captain of the Bulls, Anthony baronson Vinoy just wanting to clarify a few things with the ref. Steve O'Hergley with his trademark faking shot. Uh, unlucky there for the captain to get that loose ball, but now with Lalalio for the commandos. Bulls are pressing out, applying some pressure to stop that fast break. Looks like they have gone for a full press as well, so really looking to put pressure on these commandos. Arguably the Bulls are the fitter team. This time paying off with the, the quick shot going over. Escaf with the long shot just off the top of the bar, nearly bouncing in. The Lalio shot, oh lovely goal there. Great shot. Seems to be the Frenchman stealing the show in this game. Two goals to Jeremy Escaf, one to Lalio.
Out in the left hand side with the Jean Marco. His shot blocked out for another corner. Oh, and just loose ball there. And unfortunately, a little too aggressive, I think, from Jean Marco. So giving away the foul there, and the Commandos have the ball. One minute left in this first half. Commandos in attack. It is two goals each. On Toshen's shot blocked. Thirty seconds left. Lovely long ball down to Escaf. But oh, loose from the Frenchman and is picked up by Valls. Great work from the Spaniard to keep the ball being pressed by two balls. Fifteen seconds left in this first half now. Commandos with one last attacking option. Ten seconds. Over to Lalio. Lights it up. The shot blocked out. There is five seconds left with this corner though, so they will have the chance to try and get the ball back in and get another shot off. Great block there from Vicente. Oh, off the bar oh, by Ed. Ed Lart's shot just off the bar and that is the first half done. So scores are level, two goals each. The Bulls probably not as happy with that as they'd like considering they did have a lot of the possession and attacking threat in this first half. But thank you very much for joining me for this first half, Josh. That's all right.
Teams ready for the charge start for this second half. Jeremy Askaf taking on Alejandro Valls. And Alejandro gets the win on that charge start, so Commando starting with the ball. Joining me in commentary for this second half, another New Zealand Kiwi, this time the captain of the Blue Helmets, Alex Lowen. Alex, how are you? Fantastic, mate. Pleasure to be back. How are you? I'm good. Congratulations on maintaining that fourth place and getting into the semi-final. Oh, yeah, mate. She wasn't pretty, but um, we did what we had to. And that was losing by a margin of less than three. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I wasn't actually sure on the calculations, but uh, come the final whistle, uh, a few of our team members were pretty happy when we looked over at the school benches and they'd done the calculations and said that we were through. Yeah, it was good. Bit of a nervy start to that game though. Two penalties with green cards early on. Not how you want to start it. Can you walk us through that? We didn't get a lot of information from the referees on what was really happening there, um, from, especially from the live stream. So can you just maybe give us a bit of information on what the call was? surrounding those two? So our team talk was our big work on is just cutting down mistakes, being a little bit more clinical with our decision making and cutting out fouls and, and silly turnovers and that sort of thing. Um, so that was our big focus for that game. Um, <laughs> starting with three green cards in the first two minutes and two GPSs certainly wasn't our game plan. Um, uh, in terms of the penalties, I'm not actually sure what they were for. I think the first one was because Jeremy was not allowed to get his pass away, um, which I think was fair enough. It was a very scrappy start to the game with uh, poor communication. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure on the second one, sorry. It's alright, that's more information than what we were able to get from the feed. So, yeah, not the best to start, but you did fight your way back into it staying quite level for most of the game. They did finish up one goal ahead, but was enough to get through on goal difference. So. Playing the Tigers next in a fourth versus first. Yep, yep, we're looking forward to that game. I think uh, we're quite a well-matched team, um, sort of skill-wise and, and size-wise, I guess. Um, we've had a couple of training games against them this week and, and I'm, I'm pretty excited and I think we can, we can certainly uh, give them a good game. Yeah, it should be an exciting one coming up for our third game. In between that we will have the Hippos and the Wolves. But right now we do have that fifth versus sixth. Still no goals in this second half. But the Bulls have had the majority of the attack for the first few minutes. Lovely shot there from Hergele, just off the bottom corner. Has fallen for the commandos though, so they do have to race to get back. He's got a very big fake. He uses his arm, his shoulder, and his whole body, which is quite disconcerting as a, uh, as a defender. Um, because you don't really know when the ball's going to come. He's got a good flick shot as well, so he's, he's quite dangerous when he's got the ball on Steve-O. Oh, lovely feed in from Holmes to Lalio, and they have their goal. Great play from the commanders, just feeding that inside to the big Frenchman. He has got his second goal for the game. Commandos taking the lead, three goals to two. And you can see Cuppy in the back there giving his team a big... Come on, guys. Marco with his trademark early shot. Oh, a lovely feed in from Hergele, but just through the hands of his captain. That was a hopeful push from Mario there. I think the ball was it. Yep, it was, wasn't even at his nose. When you get pushed by a guy as big as Mario, you tend to go over. Yeah, there's not much you can do about that. Oh, it falls nicely for the captain again, feeds it through to Vladimir, but too many paddles in the way, they choose to send it back out again. Has fallen with John Marco. Definitely doesn't look like he's going to pass that off, so 
You know the shot's coming. Over there to Claremonte. Oh, the shot just blocked off. Good block there from Anton. Nice screen from Vladimir Satarov on Coopers just to push him really deep and wide. turning over the ball to the commandos so Bulls with a lot of time with the ball but unable to get a goal Commando still with that one goal lead three goals to two looks like Bulls are going out to a press here yep they have gone for a full press it's good uh, the commandos have a bit more uh, weight behind them but as uh, you might have seen in the introductions, Holger believes that he doesn't need his, uh, his strength, uh, but more his brains, which is, is good. Um, and uh, very good shot there. Um, and that's a lot, uh, that's very useful when you're on the press. Um, the orange team are very fast, and they'll be able to catch them, but if they use their screens, and like you saw there, they're free men, they'll get the goals. Nice drive down the centre from Poe, trying to get the shot through. It falls for Gianmarco and he puts it in. You got one. Nice work there from the Italian. Gets his first goal. Good quick release straight from the water up into the top goal. Top, top corner? Top goal. Top corner. I say top corner. Yeah. There's only really one goal at each end, so. That's, um, that's the big thing about canoe pole is making sure that you do only have one goal at each end. Yeah. It gets a bit confusing if you've got more than one, you don't know which one to go for. This is true. One goalie, three three goals at each end, so a bit like Canoe Polo Quidditch, really. Yeah. Be magical. Yeah, it would be. Look like the Bulls have switched to a 2-2 in defence now though. Looking to put a bit more aggression out on the team, but nice feed into Coopers and the Commandos have another goal. Stretching that lead to two. And Cuppy just calling his timeout for the half for the Bulls. 3 minutes 12 on the clock remaining in this game. Remember we do have our semi-finals coming up next. Second versus third, Wolves versus Hippos. And then the Blue Helmets taking on the Tigers in a fourth versus first. Or do you assume Cuppy is telling the troops at the moment there, Jay? I think he'd be telling everyone to focus, play to their game plan, work as a team, just keep those wayward shots down, make sure they're patient, setting their screens, creating the space and getting that higher possibility of the shot high probability shot yeah I think you hit the nail on the head there really a little bit of wayward balls some hopeful shots um, but uh, like you saw in our game against the uh, Orange um, this afternoon uh, the defense is really strong um, there you can see uh, Cuppy is saying that's not what I just said 
unlucky, managed to wrap it under the defender's arm. Five. Oh, good block by Cuppy. Cuppy's actually quite a handy goalie. Nice, quick reflex there from the captain. And the Bulls have gone for their full press again. Two minutes 40. <laughs> Lovely pass from Alejandro. Cooper's fumbling the first attempt, but unable to be moved. Gets that space and gets the open goal. Not a lot Jamarco can do to try and move 120 kilos of German muscle. Down the left hand side with their goalkeeper pole. Lovely feed in to the captain. Loose ball, but it does fall for Vicente. It was unfortunate there if uh, Cuppy had managed to hold that in his hands, uh, his player was kind of streaming through into a big gap. That would have been quite a dangerous opportunity there for them. Unlucky there for Jean Marco, just slipping out of his hand. Commanders will be happy with that though because they knew the shot was coming. Alejandro feeding it into Coopers. But Poe gets the good save, out for a corner. No, you've got to present the ball first, I think. There you go. A little bit quick with that one. Again, feeding it straight into Coopers, and he gets it past Poe. What Another goal for the big German. He's just so hard to move inside that six. You know, he just dips his boat, he's underwater, and you can't do anything. Oh, that's cheeky. Yeah, that was quite rude. But a lovely goal there. Just right on the restart. Sneaky snake. So 90 seconds left in this game. Score is 7-4. Still enough time for the Bulls to maybe get something back into here, but time slowly or even quickly running out for them now. The press at CPSL is interesting is you haven't played with these players much and so you try to work on your offence and your defence and the, the last thing you kind of work on is, is your press but uh, communication breaks down fairly quickly um, as we found with our team. It's getting better um, but I think we just need to all work together to... Move. Great goal there from Stevo Hergele. Mario's just caught tracking back to goal, facing the wrong way. Powerful shot there from the Dutch player. So 43 seconds left. Bulls going all out. And they have to score two to get this to head towards a golden goal. 30 seconds left now. Commandos really just almost playing keepings off. They don't have to score. They just have to hold on to the ball. However, they do get fined. Anton Holmes down in front of goal. He's facing the wrong way, but the goal is undefended. Oh, Gives it to his it. captain. Oh, and Ed Lart's shot. Blocked and off the bar, and that is it for the game. So the Commandos get the win, seven goals to five. They will finish in fifth place. The Bulls, despite their late resurgence, will finish in sixth place for CPSL 2019. Great performance 
from both of them for their final game of the season. And coming up shortly, we will have our semi-final games. Stay tuned for more canoe polo action.